All right, everybody. Thanks again for coming. Um, I'm Drew Carter from the Office of Admission. Um, two quick housekeeping notes. Uh, number one, uh, closed captioning is available. You can press that little CC button down at the bottom of your screen. And uh, number two, please put all your questions in the Q&A, uh, be they questions for the admissions office or for either of our students. I'll do my best to, to follow your questions towards them. Um, but I'm going to start with my own question. The, the title of this webinar series is What Were They Thinking? So I'm going to start with that. Daniela, um, what were you thinking when you were a high school junior? Um, actually, let's fast forward. Let's go to like your senior year of high school. Right at the beginning, you're kind of like midway through this college search process. What were you thinking was important to you? What Did you have a list of like qualities or characteristics in colleges that you were looking for? Yeah, definitely. So my mom actually didn't go to college in the United States. So I was kind of starting from like that scratch point where we both didn't really know what was going to be like a part of the college process. I didn't really know what I wanted. Um, I came from a pretty small high school, about 500 students total. So I was kind of used to that small environment. And I've grown up with that like smaller hometown environment with a smaller town I live in. And so kind of the first thing I was looking into was just like size. I toured a bunch of different schools, um, varying from like very large institutions to a smaller one, like here at Holy Cross. And right, so from because, there- Because your high school, everything probably felt big, right? Yeah, no, for sure. So Holy Cross did obviously feel like big, obviously being 3,000 students, but um, it definitely um, didn't feel as big as like a much larger institution. So I kind of looked at a broad range of um, population sizes of different schools and I kind of figured out that I was more leaning towards a smaller environment. Um, I do, I like that smaller class sizes where your professors kind of know like your name, um, they know who you are, um, you did, know your- Danielle, did you, did you tour schools? Like, did you figure this all out like being in person or was it online or a combination? So I kind of, I kind of started like online, kind of just seeing like different schools, what they offered and their sizes. And then I- toured a bunch of different schools in the New England area to go there. Um, so I toured probably. Did you, did you like the taking the tours and, and were you were you able to figure out if you liked colleges when you're on the tour? No, for sure. I really enjoyed doing all of the tours. I think every single school that I toured or went to go visit, I took like an official tour. Um, I really liked seeing like the student's perspective and um, being in a group too, like people will ask certain questions that maybe like I didn't know I would, I had the question as well. So I enjoyed that. Um, and then just them taking you around school and like talking about like their personal like experiences or like going on like anecdotes and just, you know, discussing their experiences. I think that really helped me a lot. Experiencing what um, the different schools like in actual environment was. Foster, what about you? What were you thinking when you were first starting the college search process? Like, remember, like, back when were you, like, a junior? You were clueless. You didn't know anything. What were you thinking was important to you? What were you thinking mattered to you? So I had a um, similar kind of mindset as um, Daniela did that I came from a school about the same size. Um, I went to a um, private um, Catholic high school in um, Massachusetts. Um, and there was only about 500 students there as well. And so um, I also was looking for a smaller community feel that I was able to um, know my professors and I would know my classmates and it didn't feel too large. But I was also really looking for just a community that was really welcoming and that I kind of like felt at home with. And in being able to tour at Holy Cross um, before everything went online, uh, I really, out of all the other schools I toured, I just felt like the most at home here. So I definitely recommend um, touring. And I just really liked the atmosphere, especially the enclosed campus um, where you were, you had the city right there for the opportunities of the city, but you also were in a space that felt safe and didn't feel like you were, um, you felt like you had a campus to go home to. So who were you talking to? Like family members, friends, guidance counselor, like who was really helpful to you as you started to figure out colleges, but also figure out yourself? Yes. Yeah, so I definitely um, took a lot of advice from different people. I definitely had a lot of conversations with um, both my parents and um, even my grandparents and kind of talking about where I wanted to go, some of my um, aunts and uncles. And then also my guidance counselor was really helpful in kind of laying out my options and um, being able to kind of see where 
what my reach schools were, what my um, my in range schools were, what some safety schools were. Um, so definitely um, family and um, and just friends in my class as well, classmates, kind of seeing where they were interested in, why they were interested in um, those schools, so that I can um, could do the same. Aunts and uncles always have an opinion, don't they? Yes, they they always have an opinion about your college search. That's not just you, but everybody. Aunts and uncles love to talk about your college search. I'm sure many of our attendees tonight are feeling that right now. Um, so, Daniela, uh, you applied to Holy Cross. Obviously, you're a student here now, so you did apply. Um, and you, I think, you applied early decision. Can you tell me when you made that decision to apply early decision and, and how? Okay, so I had toured about maybe five or six schools prior to touring Holy Cross. And honestly, by the end of the tour, I kind of was like, my mom, I was like, this is it. This is kind of the school I want to go to. I honestly, like, the experience that day really made me convinced that Holy Cross was a school I wanted to go to. And beyond that, that I wanted to apply early decision to Holy Cross. So I know it feels kind of like sudden, like it was just like on the tour, but um, of course I toured a couple of schools after, but I still like had that feeling like it's Holy Cross, like this is the school I want to be at. And do you remember like what it was that day? Like, was it the weather, the tour guide, the admissions guy giving the information session? <laughs> what, what was Honestly, it that day? I think it was like a whole cul culmination of everything. Um, I had a wonderful tour guide. Tour guide. I had a great information session. Um, it was a lovely like weather day um and I just like felt the community at Holy Cross just by like walking through campus and seeing all the livelihood of people and um uh just everything they're talking about with like um Jesuit education liberal arts um small schools small class sizes it was literally checking the list of everything that I wanted and in more some things I didn't even know I wanted the whole concept of like Holy Cross being so big on giving back to the community. I really appreciated and enjoyed that. And I just really felt like that. It's like what people tell you. They're like, when you know, you know. And like, I just felt that feeling that I knew I could be a part of the Holy Cross community. Do you remember like something that you saw when you were on your tour that like hit you or struck you, whether it was a building or a place or people? Do you, do you remember like, do you remember your tour that specifically? Yeah, I remember my tour guide, I think throughout the entire tour, tour had various students like coming up to him and just like saying hi, like, how are you doing? Or just like waving to the tour group, just like super interested in what was going on. And I just felt that throughout like the whole campus, you would see like clusters of people on the Hovel, because I kind of toured in the spring where everyone's like out on the Hovel. Um, just gathering and doing schoolwork and I could just see like that people were genuinely happy to be where they were and they just appreciated like being at Holy Cross. And Foster what about you do you remember something you saw when you were um, on your tour to, to campus that that was still vivid in your brain or like had an impact on you? So I toured, I had a unique experience where um, I toured back um, in sophomore year of high school and then I wasn't able to tour again with COVID and everything. So I don't remember a specific, um, something I saw, but um, one thing, I, one experience that I can remember is I toured the campus and with my mom and then we sat at Cool Beans and um, had um, a coffee and we're just talking about what, we, like the tour we had just been on. And I think it was just that moment of kind of like looking back at the tour and kind of like we both like kept talking about different things that we liked about the school and like different like assets that um, really like kind of fit my um, interests. And um, so it, I don't know, it's just kind of that experience of being able to look back on, look back at it and have that kind of moment in um, the cool beans, um, the cool beans tables. It's so funny, Foster, because I often give the advice to people when they visit any college to do the admissions part, but then also to go to the student center, find the coffee shop and just sit down. Because in that moment, you often gain more insight into student life than anything else because you see, you see student life, right? You see kids talking to each other. You see the way they interact. You see copies of the student newspaper. You see announcements for the activities that weekend. Um, mm -hmm. So funny that whether you heard me or not, you absorbed my, my number one piece of advice. Um, so, Daniela, was, were your parents, um, was your family, how did they feel about you? going all in, not all in, but making the big commitment 
of applying early decision to, to any school. Yeah, so I talked to my mom about it for a while. We kind of just like talked about like the pros and cons of like doing something that's like, considered to be binding. But my mom really supported me and like knew that I was very driven to find the school I wanted to go to and to find a good community. So when it came down to it, my mom supported me um, with my decision. Um, uh, I felt really confident in my choice. Um, I mean, it's definitely a lot to consider with the whole financial aspect and that it's very committing. Like if you're between a couple of schools, like it might be a bit of a harder choice, but Holy Cross was the school I wanted to be at. And um, there was not a lot that was holding me back from doing it. I was really excited to, to hopefully um, get my decision like earlier than if you apply like regular decision. And so I had like the hope for like a better security knowing where I was going. Yeah, it's funny how like, you know, there's two sides to the decision, right? Like you as a student have to decide where to apply and, and you know, maybe even where to enroll. And the admission side, we have to make a decision too. We have to decide who to admit. And these dueling sides is where we're all deliberating. We're going through sort of a, a similar process, but in a different way. And often students ask, like, is there any difference in the early decision versus regular decision and how we look at it? And the truth is the application is the same same application, the same content is in the file um, because we require fall grades. So the content is the same. Obviously the, the size of the pools are very different, right? The, the regular decision is a much bigger pool than early decision. And with early decision, you, we know that for students like you, Daniela, like you want to come to Holy Cross and you, you, if you're admitted, you, you want to enroll. Um, and that certainly adds a little bit of a, a different um, different perspective to our talk in the committee. Um, not that there aren't students like that in the regular decision pool um, who have that same intention, but is obviously very clear to us in regular, in, sorry, in early decision. Um, and, you know, these conversations that we're having, we sort of mimic some of the conversations that students have. Foster, do you remember uh, in your household, like talking about, you know, a, a hierarchy of list of schools that you were applying to? And I know you were regular decision, but, do you remember, you know, when, it, you know, when acceptances were coming out, whether you had in mind a hierarchy of, of which school was at the top, or is this still something that needed to be talked about as a family once you got all your, your news? So as we, once I submitted all of the applications um, and I was waiting for the responses um, to come in, um, Holy Cross was always kind of on the top of my list. And I, I ended up applying to, I was kind of um, went crazy. I applied to like 11 um, schools um, because with COVID and everything, I wasn't sure where I would, where I would get in, what would happen. So I just kind of applied Foster, to Foster, 11, 11 is not crazy. Okay. <laughs> Maybe it's enough. A, a tiny bit, but oh man, there are so many worse than that. So. And so um, Holy Cross was always like in that top three um, area. So to kind of like look back and see that um, I ended up going here doesn't really surprise me um, because it was always throw kind of um, in that top space. And um, so once decisions came out, it was, um, and it was down to the final few, it was, um, it was kind of, it was very clear to me that um, Holy Cross was the way to go. Daniela, is there something looking back now? So you're a sophomore. Is it, when you look back at like the things that mattered to you when you were looking at colleges, like as a high school junior or senior, you look back and say sometimes like, oh, why did I even care about X or Y? Or I should have paid more attention, paying attention to Y or Z. You look back about your process and say like, there are things you should have focused on or, or should have done differently or you, you wish you knew back then that you know now as a, as a second year student in college? Um, personally, I think that, um, I was really focused on like the area I would be living in, just kind of like the city. And I think like, just like where the college is. And I think I focused out a little bit too much. Like for a while, I thought I wanted to like be in a city, like a big city. And then I like was kind of not finding the school I wanted to go to like in a large, large city. And just looking at back on it now, I feel like the like, city like your college is in is like what you make of it. You know, any college you go to, there's lots to do in the towns that the schools are based in. But um, it's really like what you make of it. Uh, I feel like that's definitely something you should consider. But for me, like looking back on it now, like it's something I, I really like shouldn't have bothered to care about so much, I think. 
Foster, what about you? Are there things that you look back on now and say, like, oh man, why was I? I didn't know what I was doing. I, I shouldn't have been focused on blank, or I should have been focused on something that you know now. Because as a college student, like you just you have more perspective now. Mm -hmm. Definitely, the thing that I look back on the most is really wanting this like this I ideal image of going to this like top school. And Holy Cross is a very like prestigious school and whenever I tell people I go here, like they're always very impressed. But I think that I was so like focused on going to like an Ivy League school or going to like this top percent. And like, I had to have these high grades. And really, I think what was most important was the community aspect of it and really liking the school, liking the atmosphere, um, liking where it was and not focusing so much on what is the perception um, that other people are going to have about that school because in the end it's your education and it's your experience there it's not anyone else's and so it's really going to be a good match for you and it doesn't need to be this like top-notch like institution that across the world everyone screams about. Um, that's a good point and actually I'm going to capitalize on something you said and ask you the next question you've talked about um, small schools and a question from an attendee that says, I'm interested in Holy Cross due to small class size and close-knit community. Do you feel like you're close to your professors as much as you wanted to? I definitely think so. I think that I have a very like similar relationship to my professors as I did with my high school teachers and my class sizes. I think the largest class size I'm in is um, like 20, some in the, somewhere in the low 20s. So I'm never in this class that I feel like I don't get to have the attention of the professor. And there's always office hours to go to. So I always feel like I can build relationships with my professors in office hours, but also even in the classroom, I don't feel like I'm so overwhelmed with um, students that I'm not being heard or I'm not being focused on. Um, Danielle, I have a question for you from uh, an attendee. Um, uh, given that you've been at Holy Cross for a while now, sure second year student a sophomore what's your favorite part of the school you mean like place or just like just favorite thing about the school yeah favorite thing about the school um I definitely really 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 love the fact that Holy Cross is super based in community and giving back I think I've, I've obviously mentioned that a couple of times but I just love it so much um there's lots of like club opportunities at Holy Cross that involve different ways to give back to whether it's the Worcester community or just the area around us or more nationally. Um, I'm a part of a club called SPUD, which is like our, a big uh, club on campus. It kind of has a bunch of different organizations within it where you would kind of just volunteer in different locations. And I volunteer at the Boys and Girls Club where I tutor students or help them with their homework or just hang out with them after school. And it's just such a fulfilling like experience. And it's also a great way to step out of the Holy Cross campus for a bit and just experience like the real world, I guess, for a little bit and spend time with children and just knowing that I'm making their day. And I just love that that's so accessible here at the school. Daniela, can you give me, you know, we talk a lot about SPUD and there's lots of questions about it. Can you give an example of what like, what an afternoon is like, I'm assuming it's afternoons, like what an afternoon is like when you go to your SPUD site? Like walk me through it, like what happens? Yeah, so um, I'll get out of class and then meet up with a couple of students. We take the Holy Cross van over to the Boys and Girls Club in Worcester, which is about five minutes away. And we'll go, um, a couple of us will go to the learning center at the club there and help with their homework if they're still working on it. Um, we have the option to also go play games with them, like basketball or um, like hopscotch or Foursquare, like whatever they feel like playing. Um, last week, for example, I was playing with some kids um, in one of the drawing rooms and we were playing with like the rainbow loom rubber bands, just making bracelets. And um, we ended up coloring these little turkeys for Thanksgiving that's coming up. And I actually received a bunch of little turkeys from the kids and they even put my name on there. They knew how to spell my name and everything. And it just made me so happy. And I could just see the smiles on their faces. Um, you can just tell that we really do make a difference in their lives and we, give them a sort of like feeling of happiness and they just really love it and it really makes you feel good. And at, how did you, um, this is a question we get a lot of times and, and maybe we've had time as well. How did you like find out about this opportunity and how did you just sign up for it? Yeah, so um, I think the first time I really heard about it was honestly during my tour. I'm pretty sure that my tour guide was a part of SPUD 
And so I remember him talking about it and I think I looked it up on the website after and I thought it was super cool. And then at the beginning of this semester, they sent out an email to all the students about Spud Night, which was like held at the Hogan Ballroom. And um, all the different programs were there with students who are involved in them. And they had like little trifolds kind of advertising what they do. And then you could like sign up. There was tons of different options. There was um, needs of like people translating in different medical offices. Um, refugee clinics, soup kitchens, um, other children, children's like activities that they needed help with. Uh, there was just so many options. So that's kind of how I got to where I am now. Foster, I have a, a question for you. We have um, some, two questions and I think they both apply to you. Um, in some, some ways the answer might be the same. The question, first question was how are freshmen integrated into the community the first few weeks? And I'm going to sort of combine that with another question that says, can you talk about Montserrat? And maybe I'm giving, maybe these are leading questions, but um, can you talk a little bit about uh, Montserrat, which is your, your first year seminar, and how that's helped you integrate into the Holy Cross? Definitely. So to start with first coming to campus, um, there's in being integrated into the community, like immediately when you get in and you're moving in, there's a huge group of people that um, a bunch of the upperclassmen are helping you move in, moving all your stuff in, they're cheering. And so you really feel kind of like welcomed right from the start there. And then there's also um, a period of the um, weekend you move in and into the early week before classes start where there's um, orientation um, groups that form that help you to learn about stuff on campus and you can build relationships with the upperclassmen that are leading the groups and with your classmates. And then once you get into classes, then you're meeting people in classes and um, then you get to the Montserrat class. And that's really like a um, specific class that is made to cover a certain curriculum that you might be interested in. There's a lot of different options. So it's different than your regular freshman seminar where it's all the same across all freshmen. It's something, it's um, kind of what you are interested in. And, but it's also, it's there to help you find resources on campus and to have somewhere to turn to um, talk to other freshmen and to talk to your professor about anything that you might be concerned with, any things you're adjusting with. And it's really kind of tailored towards a freshman experience where you're able to kind of become more comfortable on campus and become part, more part of the community. And what's your um, Montserrat seminar? So my Montserrat seminar is Latin America through cinema. So um, is the um, first semester and then next semester it's um, Latin America through art. And so we're watching films and we're able to kind of talk about real like issues and um, we talk about the aspects of what goes into filming, but there's also like a different layer, a whole like another layer to that where we're um, talking with each other about um, different cultures and about Latin America and um, just about daily life through the movies. Yeah, super cool. That sounds awesome. Um, all right, so a question here um, from the attendees. Um, do either of you guys do admissions interviews? And what was that like? Yeah, I did an admissions interview. Um, I think it was, yeah, the fall of my senior year right before applying early decision. Um, I came to Holy Cross with my mom and I was super nervous. It was the only school I interviewed for, but it was a really great experience. Um, the first part of it, it was just me and the interviewer. And then after they actually invited my mom to come in. And so she was there and we kind of just chatted about why I liked Holy Cross, like what I was interested in, like why did I want to apply here, especially like early decision. So it was really laid back and not something that I would like seriously stress over. It was just a great experience for the admissions interviewer to like know how I felt about the school and to be able to relay that to the rest of the admissions department. It's great. How about Foster, did you have an interview in the process? Yes, I did as well. Mine was a little different with COVID. Mine was over Zoom, but um, I agree that it was nothing to really stress about. And it was more, um, it was very equal between them interviewing me and also me interviewing the school in a way where I was able to um, equal parts, be able to ask questions um, about the school. And um, it was kind of more of um, trying to learn more about me in relation to the school than um, seeing if I was like fitting into the specific box of what they were looking for. Well, you, you guys are good examples, and I'm going to mark one of these questions as answered, because one of the questions was about an opportunity that you took advantage of at Holy Cross that wasn't possible at another school, and I would say interviews, um, because lots of schools don't offer interviews, and we certainly do at Holy Cross. It's a, it's um, a, like you said, Foster, it's an important way in which we, the admissions office, get to know students who are interested in Holy Cross. It 
helps bring so much more color to your black and white application. But in the same way, I think it helps um, students learn about Holy Cross and they get the opportunity to ask questions and learn more about the school. Um, admissions counselors do interviews. We also have some alumni volunteers do interviews. And then we have a big group of, of current Holy Cross seniors who do interviews for us as well. So it's a chance to really, uh, I think, gain unique insight, but also add unique insight to your, applica your application. Um, still plenty of opportunities to sign up for interviews and um, you can do so yourself actually on our website. Um, all right, so just a, a little, a few more minutes just for a couple more questions. Um, let's see, we might have um, we might have answered this one before, but Daniela, um, what stands out to you most about the Holy Cross community? Yeah, definitely. So I think just the fact that Holy Cross is a liberal um, liberal arts school, undergraduate, Jesuit um, based, already makes Holy Cross stand out. And I think just the Jesuit like education that we have here and like I keep saying and I keep emphasizing, but it's just because it's like so important to me is the whole idea of like giving back to the community. And I think that really makes us stand out because we have so many opportunities for that. And I think it also helps the Holy Cross campus itself like grow closer as we're helping other people. It helps you learn to make new friends, learn about like the real world and what people like go through every day. And I think it just really helps us feel um, um, more appreciative of the world. And I feel like that's something that you don't often find at a lot of like larger institutions or ones that aren't like so Jesuit based that really care about like what you are giving back, like you like taking your education and like passing that on to the rest of the world. So I think that's a value that is very unique to Holy Cross. Um, that's great, Danielle. And you made a question there about the sort of unique Jesuit value of Holy Cross and, and you really you really nailed it and answered it right there. I'm gonna take a quick look at our, our poll answers um, before we run out of time tonight. So let's see, Foster, you were in, in the majority there with uh, applying to more than eight schools. So see, you're totally normal. Um, with uh, a big group who has interviewed, another group who hasn't interviewed yet, and another group who hopefully will be signing up tonight for their interview, um, a group who's already applied, another group who's gonna wait a little bit closer to the deadline. And then we've got, yeah, there you've got a, a smattering of some early decisions, some regular decisions, and then some still on the fence. Um, a great uh, selection. I think in some ways it's uh, representative of the two of you, you know, with a regular decision and an early decision. That's great. Okay, so we've got just, just a few more minutes for a couple more questions here. Um, uh, how, uh, Foster, uh, how interactive are classes? Uh, they're very interactive from my experience um, from my Montserrat class where um, constantly the class is very heavily driven by like the students doing presentations. And so there's a lot of interactive components with that. And even in my intro bio class, uh, we've done a lot of different activities where we've had post-it notes and we've had to kind of like order like certain molecules. Um, and we also did um, when we were learning about um, signaling pathways in the cell, we um, had all these different um, like balls and like um, pool noodles. And we were kind of like acting out the signaling pathway in class um, with all the students like taking part. So there's definitely a lot of interactive components that um, kind of help you learn things more than just sitting there and having the information thrown at you. You know, we were talking a bit before about, you know, things that you thought when you were in high school and things you know now. One of the things I think can really happen to students is they can really discover new academic interests or confirm similar academic interests when they get to college. When you were applying to Holy Cross, what did you think you wanted to major in? Um, recognizing everybody comes in undeclared, so you didn't know. But what did you think you wanted to major in? And where are you now on that journey? Okay, yeah, so um, I originally thought that I was going to be either an anthropology or neuroscience and a Spanish major. And I'm currently a psychology and art history major. So kind of along the same sort of ideas, but definitely had a change of heart. I, interestingly enough, I always mention this when I give tours is how I became an art history major. And um, last semester in the spring, I took intro to visual arts because I needed a class to cover my art requirement. And I just figured, okay, I'll just do that. And I was kind of just taking it to take it, get the requirement out of the way, like learn some stuff, but I never had any intention of being an art history major. And I had a wonderful professor. She was absolutely incredible. I loved the class so much that I literally declared an art history major. 
and I love it so much. Um, I was originally going to also be an anthropology major, but after taking my intro psych class and my intro to anthropology class, I discovered that I enjoyed the psychological part of it like more. And it also still gives me a little bit of like the anthrop anthropological like ideas like with cross-cultural psychology or social psychology, but I'm a huge fan of like the like just understanding people, not only in like culture sense, but also like individually. So that kind of like steered me a different way. But that's what you get like when you come to a liberal arts school is that you have like those opportunities to, you know, take a lot of different classes and then find out like, oh, I actually like this or, oh, I thought I was going to like this and I actually don't. Like, I, I don't think I would have had the same experience at like a school that's not liberal arts where I may have still been a psychologist or an anthropology major there. So that was one of the, the sort of the benefits. There was a question just in the, in the Q&A. Benefits of coming in undecided. Like you, you sort of weren't, weren't set on a narrow path already and you got the chance to take several classes. I'm guessing you weren't alone in that process, that your advisor was sort of helping you pick classes and helping you identify areas of interest. Can you tell me about some of those conversations? Definitely. So I had like my first year advisor, which is what you would get as a student prior to declaring your major. And she and I just kind of went back and forth. I was kind of telling her like what my career aspirations were, um, which for me is to go into a career in nursing. So then we were kind of discussing like, OK, what is my best like way to prepare for that? Like, what can I do to ensure that I have a good pathway out of Holy Cross? And so we kind of figured like psychology would kind of be a good way to go for that especially I'm interested in like working with children so just kind of understanding like the whole psychology behind adolescence and everything like that um and whereas with art history it was kind of more out of like a passion thing like I just really personally enjoy it so much and my advisor and I kind of went back and forth too like she was giving me advice on like what I should do um never like telling me I need to do one thing or the other but just kind of supporting me in my decisions and yeah, that really helped me a lot. And I talked with some of my professors too, like my history professor and my psych professor I had in the fall, just about like what I was thinking and like what they thought. Um, it's pretty helpful. Really cool. Okay, so we've got like two minutes left. So we're going to go lightning round here, lightning round of questions and answers. Okay. Um, first, um, foster favorite Holy Cross food thing. Um, I would say um, my favorite personally is the breakfast sandwiches um, at um, Diagostino's, my favorite. And, what, and what's, what's on your ideal breakfast sandwich? Um, I do the um, bacon, egg, and cheese um, on a plain bagel. Okay, Daniela, favorite Holy Cross food thing? Um, anything that involves pasta at Kimball, particularly the Alfredo sauce, which has finally made a comeback in the past couple of days, which has made me very happy. I'm, I, I know you didn't ask me, but I'm going Kimball Donuts. Um, all right, another lightning round question. Uh, I'll send this one to you, Foster. Uh, pitfall of freshman year, something to look out for, something to avoid. Um, I think um, for, for me, I think I've seen like that um, you really have to get go out there and kind of like immerse yourself um, with the community. And um, I've seen some people where they kind of like stay in their dorm room and don't really like want to go out and they kind of like cling to that like safe space. So I think like it's it's great to have to feel safe in your dorm room and to have that kind of place to go back to, but really trying to get out there, meet with people, make new friends, go join the extracurriculars and kind of immerse yourself in the community. And Danielle, uh, last one for you. Um, you know, you're a high school student and your high school is everything. And at a certain point, you're a new student in college. And then at some point, that college becomes your school. How did you know Holy Cross was your school? When did the Holy Cross become your school? And to, to, to quote the, the student's question in the Q&A, how did you know you belonged at Holy Cross? So um, obviously my fall of freshman year was online. So I kind of like lost a little bit of that like first initial start. But I think when I got onto campus last semester in the spring, Holy Cross did so much stuff to make sure that we felt like part of the community just because like we just spent a whole semester online and kind of lost that first bit of time but I think just once I found a group of friends I could like 
go back and forth from Kimball from, that's when I kind of felt like, I mean, I know it's like a little small thing, but that's kind of when I felt like, oh, like I have my people here. Like I actually do go to Holy Cross. Like I'm not just a student here, but like I'm a person who like is at Holy Cross. Like I am part of the Holy Cross community. So even just like little things like that, that make you feel like you belong. It really does go a long way. Um, that's a great intro into um, my, what I was going to say next, and that is to um, thank both of you, but also to tell our attendees our last um, follow-up and house webinar is coming up this Sunday. The title is What Makes the Holy Cross Communities Special? We've got current students, we'll have alumni, we have a really interesting group of people talking about what makes, um, what adds that sort of really special quality to Holy Cross. Um, the link is there, sign up. Uh, thanks again for coming. Thanks again to both of you for sharing your insights um, and to all of our attendees. Hope to see you next Sunday. Stay safe, stay sane, and stay in touch. Good night.